everybody how's it going first off happy pride and i hope that you all are doing well for those that don't know me my name is day to dave i am a black queer creator here on twitch my pronouns are he him and honestly i'm just glad to be here with you all especially on pride month how you all doing in the chat i can see you all i see leela's fox i see Laja, shago shago and everybody i hope that you all day as well and we'll have a lot of time to talk about pride and many things of that nature but let's talk about today's show so if you don't mind me introducing it Today's show is about this. So the It Gets Better Project is holding its fourth annual It Gets Better, a digital pride experience, which is a series of pride streams on Twitch. Oh, yo, I see some gifts. Want to say thank you for that support. I'll repeat what I'm saying, but thank you, Nova Jones, for your kindness in supporting the channel. But bringing it back, it's the fourth annual It Gets Better, a digital pride experience. This is a series of pride streams on Twitch and TikTok for LGBTQIA plus youth who may not be able to celebrate pride in person. 
This year, It Gets Better Project will be streaming every single Thursday in June at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as a part of their digital pride experience. However, you can catch many of the It Gets Better Project ambassadors, including myself, streaming on the channel as well as all month long and even beyond. You know, I think I'll be on on Tuesday. You can hear conversations about representation and various topics from different people of different orientations of the LGBTQIA plus orientations. So be sure to check out the Twitch schedule here to see when their next stream is. And thank you very much. I see you in chat. Hey, RJ. Hey, Ariel. A pleasure to see you all as well. So to speak a little bit about our guest today, our first guests are drag performers from the Drag Story Hour of Vermont. So we have Emoji Nightmare and Katniss Everqueer. And first off, I love their names. It's a phenomenal. Drag Story Hour is just what it sounds like. Drag performers reading stories to children in libraries, schools, and bookstores, and here today as well. So this will be followed by our Digital Pride Experience Authors Panel, where we invited four authors to join us in celebrating Pride while also combating all of the attacks on queer artistry this past year. So today, our authors will be sharing excerpts from their own writing so LGBTQIA plus youth can experience the wide range of writing available for them and for them right now. So we'll hear from Maya Kobe, Chung Ling Nguyen, Jonathan Everson, and Abdi Nazemian, followed by a Q&A hosted by our own It Gets Better Project staff, Ariella, the manager for programs and operations. So learn more about it with the exclamation mark authors command in chat. So can someone give that to me? Exclamation mark authors. Hey, hey, everybody. Now I'll give you the next segment. After that, we'll be chatting with another one of our staff, Ray, our senior coordinator for education, along with It Gets Better Project's very own youth voice, Fee. If you didn't know, our youth voices are an annual cohort of young people ages 13 to 18 who team up with the It Gets Better Project to offer their unique stories and words of advice to other LGBTQIA plus youth around the globe. You can learn more about the Youth Voices by doing the exclamation mark Youth Voices command in chat or stick around for this segment later in the stream. So definitely support them in that. And yet again, for that command, it's exclamation mark Youth Voices. Can someone hit it for me in chat? But with that said, how are you all doing today and how's your Pride Month? I do a lot of talking. I'll let you know about mine, but I would love to see how's Pride Month going for you. It is, what, June 15th? So I hope it's going great and phenomenal. And how's it going? So for me, things that I'm looking forward to this Pride Month, honestly, one thing I love about Pride Month, I love just being able to discover more queer creators on Twitch, in person. It's a great month where places like Twitch and other platforms highlight these creators so that I personally could go support Check out their content. Do they sell something cool? I would love to buy and purchase or seeing queer artistry, t-shirts and everything. So I just love being, seeing creators or different people highlighted so I can learn what they do. Check them out on social media and support. But what about for you all? What about for you all? And then for Pride Month plans, let me see. Honestly, I'm in Atlanta, so be my park, going out with my friends that are queer and allies, just being out and about and seeing such a pro-queer space is phenomenal. So I love it. Um, my plans, like I said, I'm planning them and I know things I'm going to, but I'm just really excited for that for Pride Month. But what about you all? What, what are you looking forward to this Pride? And one thing I'm going to add that I always love about Pride Month, I love when video game companies and activations say, hey, we got Pride emotes. Like, I'm a big League of Legends gamer, so emotes, having that, having skins, I think in League right now, and I can nerd out with you all all day over it. You know, there's like cool running animation that you have, so it's really cool to see. So Lisa Fox says, I've been reading queer books and playing queer games. Love it. If you're willing, uh, do you mind sharing a few, maybe those games or books that we could check out? And Ariel says, so many pride activities. I'm looking for so many pride activities, plus being with so many of the queer Jewish community in Denver. Nice. I love that. I love that. Anyone else, what do you have going on this month and what are you looking forward to this month? Uh, for video games, I've seen Rocket League throw support. I've seen a lot, excuse me, I've seen a lot of things in the nature. So what else have you all got going on? Outside of that, if you're comfortable sharing, do you all have a favorite previous Pride Month experience? Me, I got plenty, but I'll go with my first one. So my first Pride, I don't know how many years ago, the years keep going on. So I personally came out five, six years ago, time flies, I can't count them anymore. But my first Pride here in Atlanta was a phenomenal experience. It's Beat My Park, which is why I'm excited to go again. And going there and seeing people out and about, it was music, it was great food, mute, like just seeing everybody in the town, 
the pride merch, everything. It just felt so accepting and it was a great environment. And like I said, I'm going again. So, you know, that was my favorite experience because, you know, it's like, hey, I feel comfortable. And I hope that more people in different places get to experience that with wherever they are in life, you know, to feel comfortable, safe, and just enjoy being yourself, being queer, and ultimately being you, whichever identification that you have. But let me catch up with Chad. I want to see what you all are saying. You said reading LGBTQIA plus books and listening to audiobooks at work now, but tuning in. Well, welcome on in. Glad to have you. And I hope your work day goes smooth for you, Icy. And of course, for you, doctor, as well. Still at work. And I'm glad to know your pronouns are he, him. Well, glad to hear it. I hope that your work day goes great. It's Thursday, so we're almost to the weekend. I hope that you get your relaxation on top of your happy pride, whatever that may be this month for sure, you know? So that relaxation will be great. So Lita's mentioned that you just finished Cemetery Boys, the book, and you're loving the game Wildflower. Oh, I know Wildflower. Wildflower is fun. I got to play it. You know, I'm personally a big fan of the in the city character, like you're new to the city, experiencing other people, get to know others, and they, you know, it's been fun. And you get a life simulator. And they got magic too, which I really, really do like. Any book I would recommend. Let me think. Okay. Say goes buddy. You know this one. Um, so I'm a huge fan of the Velvet Rage. It talks a bit about the queer experience. And for me personally, that was a book where I looked at it and I was like, you know. It talks about things that we've gone through growing up, going from 90s, 2000s. I'm a 92 baby, but 90s, 2000s, going in today's age, and maybe some habits that we've grown with and things that we should develop within ourselves. So I wouldn't label it a self-help book, but it's just saying, hey, you know, some people of our community may act this way. Maybe we've had this experience, and this is how we can potentially deal with it, whether it be through therapy or steps we could take on our personal journey. So Velvet Rage for me, because that book, like a lot of habits that I had. And I'm like, wow, you know, let me make sure that I am bettering myself, striving to be better. So I feel like that's a great, I don't want to say must read, but it's a good read, whether you do identify as LGBTQIA+, or even if you're an ally that wants to learn. Like my younger brother, he read the book too. He's a straight ally. And uh, he read it because he's like, I just want to understand you better and understand others as well. So that's my book. And that's why I stand by that book always. because I learned a lot. Everything may not apply to you directly. Like everything in that book didn't apply to me, but for the aspects that did, it made me learn. So I love that. Is he getting married in that game soon? Oh, who you thinking, Leela's? But anyone else, do you have a favorite pride experience or do you have a favorite pride? Things that you're looking for this month, you know? Things that you're looking forward to this month. And then of course, you know, we're on Twitch. So I'm going to ask, even if it's not that, what have you been playing? Anything you're looking forward to? Because let's see, what have I been playing? I mentioned League of Legends, and I'm probably always going to talk about Pokemon Unite. That's that's personally one of my favorite games as well. But uh, Diablo 4, <laughs> um, funny story time. So I played Diablo 4, and I was like, let's do a hardcore run through. Would y'all believe I lost in the first 15 minutes? For those that don't know hardcore, your character gets one life through the entire game, one through level 100. So I lost at level 7, and it was a very, very... Challenging time, but we're going to keep that going on stream. Y'all can catch me over there or catch me here. I could run some playthroughs as well on the It Gets Better project channels. But yet again, just a reminder, because we have some amazing creators today, definitely hit exclamation mark authors. I'll hit that too to know that we're going to highlight those authors today. And can I get an exclamation mark youth voices? We're going to have the youth voices fee speak up today as well. So plenty of great content plenty of talented individuals and it's just gonna be a great time i'm gonna be in the background watching myself rj says i think we should do it again we can for sure we can for sure and do not forget to support the it gets better project the nonprofit, and learn more about it i think we have an exclamation mark info command welcome on in giltham and welcome in walker of the wild how are you doing today shago asked an amazing question and this is to everybody when i throw it out there are there any queer artists you look forward to seeing soon? Whether you've been listening to them or you want to see them in concert, who will it be? So Walker actually named two of my favorites hands down, so I'll answer it myself. Uh, Walker has said he's mentioned, been listening to Little Nas X, Kay Trinata, and Janelle Monae. And I said that it was two. You hit three. But um, Janelle Monae, new album, very queer. She says, I'm buying, I'm here, and I love it. I love it. Her music has been great. I love how open she's been when she's been in interviews, talking through her music and saying, hey, she's queer and that's cool, you know? So it's amazing to see. It's been really amazing to see. Anyone else? Anyone else? And Kate Trinata, I love Kate Trinata. That, that's my vibe all day. 
Gil Film, I've been doing really, really well. My day has been great. How's your day been? Is it Rena Sal? Yes, definitely, Ari. Definitely, indeed. Okay, I'm with that completely. Any concerts you all plan on going to or anybody you want to see? Um, I've seen Kate Trinata, but I would not be against seeing it again. But Janelle Monet is now really high on my list. And it was funny. I've actually hosted an event for Twitch. And I had the chance of speaking to Liz and Megan Linnaeus. Um, Even though I don't, they aren't weird, I just want to throw in a pair more there. I want to go. RJ says Isaiah Rashad. I'm planning on seeing him. I'm planning on seeing him this summer. <laughs> That's high on my list, so I'm definitely with it. And part of bottom case, yes, R. Williams. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay, y'all got good taste. I love to see it. I love to see it indeed. But yet again, for those wondering, we have a lot of cool events going on today. We are going to have Drag Story Hour Vermont with Emoji Nightmare and Katniss Everqueer. And yet again, you're going to hear a panel of authors hearing excerpts from their book. And of course, talk, talking about today's climate, combating all the attacks on queer artistry this past year. So be sure to check out this huge, amazing stream. And of course, the youth voices as well. So I'm going to keep reminding you all, because as new people come in, they might say, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, hey, welcome on in. You're at the It Gets Better, a digital pride experience. And remember, this is going on every single Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time during the month of June. And of course, for those who don't know, be sure to follow because there's plenty of ambassadors that talk about amazing subjects on this channel, including myself, when it comes to diversity, representation, and more on this channel. So first off, be sure to follow. Second off, stick around for the show and learn about the amazing things we have going on today. And third, uh, we've been talking about music and video games. So what queer artists have you been listening to? Are you looking forward to anything from Pride this month? And what's your favorite Pride experience? So let me catch up and see what some music. Said so Jesse Ware, yes. So um, Shago asks, does anyone have any queer icons that they look up to? Hmm, I got to think about this one. I got to think about this one for myself. Queer icons we look up to, the way I'm about to just name a bunch of Twitch streamers, because honestly, from watching them and seeing them be bold and be themselves, I'm just like, you know, it's, it's great. You know what I mean? They, I respect many of them. Like I mentioned, Megan Lenny is for her passion for music. I believe that she's actually creating music, a part of a queer album, having multiple musicians and artists that are all queer on it. So that's one person. I just think I watch a lot of streamers. So just seeing them shine in their space is amazing. Blizz being, you know, confidently himself, openly bi, and at the same time doing this at Rooster Teeth as well. And it shows through the content, clips, and videos. I'm like, I respect that. Like, you're bold, you're, you're saying it takes, and it's just amazing to see. And, you know, I'm going to go straight up to, like, different artists and things I listen to as well. So, you know, what are queer icons that you all have? Like, y'all know I can keep talking, so I'm going to try to look at chat, see what you all have as well. But queer icons you all look up to. What do you got? I'm going to give you some space to speak as well. Queer icon. I'm trying to see you in the name. I'll just keep thinking of Twitch streamers. What about you, Shago Shago? You got anybody in mind? And then video games, like I said, anything that you all are playing currently or looking forward to. Me, I'm a Final Fantasy nerd. So Final Fantasy 16, eight to seven more days. So it'll be here really quick. For those that haven't played the demo, it's on PS5. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I came into that game very skeptical. I'm like, is this going to be good? I didn't really like 15 that much. Is 16 going to be all right? Just from that demo alone, I'm like, yeah, you, you got me about to buy the deluxe. It's that good of a story and a fun combat system as well. Honestly, Bug Snacks is so quick. I heard about that. Do you recommend that? I have it downloaded from, I believe, Xbox Game Pass. But like, I've been eyeing it. I hear good things. But is it really fun? I'm glad to know it's queer. I didn't know that, actually. I did not say pat up now. Love to see it. You said I feel a special kind of love. JT says I feel a special kind of love for Frida Kaho and Howard Ashman. Both are incredible artists that shared some pretty powerful subliminal messages of queerness through their work. I love that. I love that. You know, honestly, I'm gonna have to give them a look. I'm gonna have to give them a look. You said 100 percent is so fun and it's so weird. For Bug Snacks, I saw it. And honestly, it looked very witty from the trailers that I saw. I need to actually dive into it. So you know what, Ari? I will actually give it a look and give it a shot. I actually will. I actually will completely. You said, I don't know how queer it's going to be, but I cannot wait for the movie Joyride. Joyride, I have heard of it. I don't know the trailer. Well, speaking of movie, are there any queer movies you all recommend? 
I know I'm just throwing it out there, but it just popped up on my mind. So for Shago Shago, queer icons, I guess, Keon from a game called Dreamfall Chapters. It's one of the very first gay main characters I've ever experienced. Well, you bring up a very good topic, Shago Shago. So what is some of your memorable or favorite or first video games where you got to say, hey, this is queer and I love it? I got mine, but let me catch up with chat first. Julian says, Leomi from the ball scene is iconic to me. Love me some queer dance history. Oh, you know what that brings up to me? Okay, media and movie and shows. Uh, have y'all seen Pose? Have y'all seen Pose? Like, I actually didn't, this was years ago, um, seen much of the, you know, the ballroom scene and Pose, you know, I believe it was a pretty accurate, well, first off, I want to go to a ball one day. I really want to see, I'm in Atlanta. I'm sure they're out here. I've been bothering Shago Shago saying, we're going to find one. But Pose, like, it introduced me to me. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. It was a great drama. It was a great show. And I've learned a lot for it. I highly recommend if you all haven't seen it to go see it. I think it's on Netflix. But, yeah, go watch it if you all haven't. You said, Dave, have you been watching the Ultimatum? Leela's? <laughs> oh, I hope you finished it. I finished it last night. Um, for those that don't know, the Ultimatum actually had their first queer season of All Women. And... It was it was a watch. I mean, of course, with it being reality television, you know, you know, there is going to be the drama. There's going to be different things. But I think just them having more. This is an all queer cast is a positive and we should have a lot more of it. Uh, my favorite season. I don't remember what it was called. I believe it's perfect match. My favorite season. I highly recommend you watch it for a multitude of reasons. I can nerd out. Someone correct me if I'm wrong if it's not perfect match. But they had a queer season of called a perfect match. It was season eight where they had both men and women, people of varied identifications of the LGBTQIA plus identification orientation. And they were all there saying, hey, one of these people, your perfect match. I think as a queer person myself, you can learn so much from that season. I don't want to spoil it for you because it's just that good of a watch. But a lot of people learn a lot more about themselves in that show. And it's reality television. So... Highly recommend it. Leaders, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. But the ultimatum, listen, we could we could do an entire stream, R. Williams right, about the ultimatum. Both, you know, the things that we can learn from it and its entertaining and habits. I, I feel like you can learn a lot from uh, shows on that, especially from the queer perspective. But you see, I could talk about that a lot. I want to make sure I'm keeping up with chat because I can rant on these topics in a good way, of course. So, Jimmy says, Sherry Cola and Stephanie Houston. Yes, yes. AAPPI joint. Yes. They're amazing. Sherry Cola and Stephanie Houston. Sorry if I'm pronouncing you wrong. And let me catch up with chat here. I see, honestly, I would disagree. I don't feel like that's basic. But they said this is basic, but Stardew Valley, being able to marry Alex and the grandfather having dialogue, just saying he didn't understand it. But then he changed his mind more over time. Did not know that part. I didn't. I don't know. That hit me more for a video game. Like, damn, nice to see that. I see that's amazing. Not a basic pick because I actually have started playing Stardew Valley co-op with Shago Shago. You see in chat because I was like, hey, we could play this game. Date who you want, and I love that because I love seeing more video games. Just say, hey, for me, like, hey, you're gay, and that's okay. Have fun. Date who you like. You and in Stardew, I didn't even know that they addressed that fact that, like, hey, if you start dating this man and you're a man, for example, example, because I haven't played this portion, and grandfather saying I don't understand it, eventually I do understand or I get it or accept it. That's amazing. So you just inspired me to actually continue my playthrough with that. So that's an amazing example. Um, with me personally, um, when well, I mentioned video games where you got to be queer, for me, it was Mass Effect. I think Mass Effect was one of the first games to where on stream at least where I was like, hey, I'm going to date the guy and I'm a male character. Chat, y'all cool. Chat was like, yeah, we like, oh, he's good for you. Ooh, I don't know, Dave, you might want to pick the other guy. But just having that experience, comfortability, both in a public setting and acceptance is amazing. So if anybody else has that video game where you're like, hey, you know, that was the first time I was like, wow, you know, video games are getting much better. <laughs> See that? It gets better. So things are improving and getting better in the space in general in the world. And, of course, in the gaming space as we get more representation and more. So anyone else have any game suggestions? I already have a few off the top of my head. If you all haven't, Boyfriend Dungeon. But first off, Lila, you said one episode left. Please watch it. Please watch it, especially the reunion if it's that last episode. Um, Ultimatum, Queer Season, great to see. Definitely a great watch. It was okay. Come on, Liara Sony. I love that, Lila. I love that indeed. I really, really do. 
Um, I'll throw another queer game to check out, or even if it wasn't your first, or a recommendation. But another the queer game to check out is Boyfriend Dungeon. You make your character, date who you want, and at the same time, it's a very, very fun roguelike. In this world, the people that you date can actually turn into weapons, and you fight with them throughout the dungeon. And as you fight with them, you get to know them better. So ultimately, choose who do you want to date or beat the game with. Definitely check it out. S. Popkin, yes. Life is Strange, True Colors. Love that game. It's phenomenal. I will give them the highest of props when it comes to not only representation, but writing. The writing is phenomenal. The dating feels, I'll say, organic, which is amazing in it because it's like, hey, you know, we want to date. You know, it's cool. You know, you feel represented both in the people you can date and the people outside of it. And it's just accepted in a great way. And the writing, phenomenal. And Hades, Hades, everybody's hot. <laughs> I like that in Hades. It is not only applied, it is said out loud. And that's an amazing, I love the topic of roguelikes. It's one of my favorite genres. Uh, it's an amazing roguelike. But yet again, for those watching, if you all have it, be sure to follow this channel. And for those that don't know what's going on today, let me just repeat for you all. Today is the was part of the fourth annual It Gets Better, a digital pride experience, which is a series of pride streams on Twitch and TikTok for LGBTQIA plus youth who may not be able to celebrate pride in person. So remember, this will be every Thursday in June at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So now to reiterate what we have today, we're going to have Drag Story Hour in Vermont with Emoji Nightmare and Katniss Everqueer. Following that, we are going to have our digital pride experience authors panel. We're going to have four authors to join us in celebrating pride while also combating all the attacks on the queer artistry this past year. So they're going to be showing their own writing for LGBTQIA plus youth. And you can hear about the wide range of writing available to them right now. And those four authors will be Maya Kovai, Maya Kovai, Chung Ling Nguyen, Jonathan Everson, and Abdi Nazimian. And we'll have a Q&A as well. And do not forget, we're going to have also our It Gets Better project staff member, Ariella, which is the manager of programs and operations. And we're going to have Ray, our senior coordinator for education. And we're going to have our very own Youth Voice Fee being a part of the show. And they are from the Youth Voices, which is a cohort of young people from 13 to 18 years old. So catching on up, you said, Haiti said, everybody, everywhere, all at once. Yes, indeed. And I'm just going to say, since RJ brought it up, please watch every, was it every, so let me see it. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I feel that it does a great job with queer representation. And I think anybody, 90s, 2000s, whatever going on, you're going to love the show. You're genuinely going to love that movie. Uh, it might tear up a bit. I watched it three times. Happy Pride indeed, Pecori. How are you? How are you indeed? So I hope everybody's having a great Pride. I hope that you all stick around and enjoy the show. We have some phenomenal people here with us. Hey, what's going on, Mangalo? Welcome on in. That movie is phenomenal. Like I said, I cried two, three times in that movie. It is really, 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 really great. So everybody, yet again, happy Pride. But with that said, we're actually going to take a quick break. Glad that you're doing well, Pakori. So we're going to first, before we get started with our segment, we're going to take a quick break and make sure that we stretch and take care of ourselves. Everybody get some water. Be sure to drink. I have some of my own. And I want to let you all know that Planet Fitness has partnered with It Gets Better to uplift, empower, and connect LGBTQIA plus youth across the globe by helping them feel good in fitness. During the break, they're going to host a two-minute low-intensity training session specifically for Twitch streamers and viewers. So feel free to tag along if you like. This is the first one we're going to watch, and that will help stretch out your chest and back for those long durations of sitting. See, I'm going to be following along in the background. So you can learn more about our partnership in the pinned message in chat or by doing the command exclamation mark PF. So yet again, someone hit exclamation mark PF for me. Enjoy, and when we get back, I'm going to introduce you to our first guest of the stream. With that said, see you soon, everybody. And welcome to Low Intensity Indoor Training with Planet Fitness. As the judgment-free zone, we're partnering with the It Gets Better Project in support of uplifting, empowering, and connecting LGBTQ plus youth around the globe. Flexing your pride can happen anywhere and anytime. So why not right here and right now? First, let's loosen up your shoulders with some stretches. Clasp your hands so they go behind your back. Push your chest outward and raise your chin ever so slightly. Makes you feel a big stretch that happens right across your heart. 
We're gonna hold this pose for about 10 to 30 seconds. All right, let's gonna release it. Now let's hit our upper back with a nice forward stretch. Clasp your hands in front of you and lower your chin down so they're the same line as your shoulders. You're gonna hold this pose for about 10 to 30 seconds. Here's a fun fact. This stretch is also known as a rhomboid upper or upper back stretch. Go ahead and release it. We'll soon finish it off with a nice torso stretch or trunk rotation. Keeping your feet flat on the floor and facing forward. Twist your upper body in the same direction as the arm that's resting on the back of your chair. So it looks a little bit like this. Lift the heart, take a big exhale and start to twist. Now you're gonna hold it here for about 10 to 30 seconds. Repeat the same thing onto the other side. Oh, that feels good. And it's just what I needed in order to refill my stamina wheel. Now, let's explore depths. everybody so like i said oh i can hear myself back that's me all right how's it going so like i said before our first guest are drag performers for from drag story hour vermont emoji nightmare and katniss everqueer let me first tell you a little bit more about dsh and our two guests before we bring them on stage for their readings dsh captures the imagination and play of the gender fluidity of, of childhood and gives kids glamorous positive and unabashed queer role models in spaces like this kids are able to see people who defy rigid gender restrictions and imagine a world where people can present as they wish where dress up is real emoji nightmare is one of the burlington area's best and brightest drag queens Emoji has been a headline performer in Paint, a drag cabaret, and has hosted and performed at some of the Queen City's biggest drag shows, including New Queers Eve, Pride Ball, First Friday, Glitter, and Duct Tape, the Vermont Pride Festival, Queer Pop-Up Dance Party, and Sass. Katniss Everqueer is a performance artist with Green Mountain Cabaret based out of Burlington, Vermont. She loves blurring the lines between dancers and audience. Her numbers are often interactive and nostalgic, referencing the beloved to the slightly horrific and bizarre. Katniss and Emoji have also produced both digital and in-person shows celebrating fat burlesque and drag performers. Together, they also travel the state through the Vermont chapter of Drag Story Hour, reading stories of inclusion, acceptance, imagination, and glitter, and increasing representation of LGBTQI plus stories for young audiences. If you want to learn more about Drag Story Hour and our guests, do the exclamation mark DSH. Yet again, someone hit it for me. Exclamation mark DSH, commanded chat. With that said, we hope you enjoy Katniss and Emoji's company for the next half hour and the readings they're about to do. So I'll be enjoying it too. So I hope that you all are ready. And with that said, take it away. <laughs> Can't wait. Hello. Hi. 
My name is Emoji Nightmare. And I'm Katniss Everqueer. We're so, so happy to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Amazing. So we're going to start with a song. We do a song at the beginning of all of our drag story hours. And we have some exciting little signs to go along with it, some American Sign Language. And so we're gonna start off with hello. Please join us in saying hello. Looks like this. Like you're saluting, yeah. And then friends. Oh, I say like you're hu giving your friend a hug. Yeah. And it's time. Like you're pointing at a watch. To say. Like the words are coming out of your mouth. Hello. Hello. And it goes like this. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends. It's time to say hello. Oh, so good. Now do you think you can join us in singing? I bet they can emoji. I want to hear you loud and proud. Ready? Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends. It's time to say hello. Hello. Hello, friends. We're so grateful to be here with all our new friends tonight. All right, Kenneth, do you think they are ready to level up? Round two. Okay. Are you all ready? Yes, they are. So instead of saying it's time to say hello, we're going to say it's time to read. Like you're following the words across a page. A book. Like you're opening the pages of a book. All right. Same melody. All right. From the top. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to read a book. Shall we? We shall. Let's do it. Let's do it. Our first book, you know, Katniss, it's June. It's June? Yeah. Which is Pride Month. Oh, my goodness. Which is probably why we're here. That makes sense. But You're right. You can celebrate Pride any month of the year. Absolutely. In all Vermont, we celebrate we celebrate Pride in September. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. All Why our Pride not? stuff September. Who knew? We like to keep it weird here in Vermont. <laughs> but this is this day in June. Yes. It's all about Pride. Mm. So we are going to get right into it. Yes. This day in June, Parade starts soon. Rainbow arches and joyful marches. Mm. Yeah. <gasps> Motors oh. roaring, roo, 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 and spirits soaring. Yeah. Oh. Voices chanting and doggies panting. <laughs> yeah, such a silly little dog. Silly little puppies. <gasps> Clad in leather, no matter the weather. Uh -huh. yeah. Perfect weather. It's in perfect. Oh. Artists painting and sisters sainting. <laughs> you know the drag queen Shangela always oh, says, Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, banners swaying and children playing. There's a place for everyone at Pride. Yeah. Oh, dancers jumping and music pumping. Oons, 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 yeah. Oons. <laughs> we like to dance. We like to party. Who else loves to dance? Me. Yes. Sidewalks shaking. Oh, and tummies aching. We always wonder why are tummies maybe. Drink your water, get dehydrated, right? I think it's the bass from the music. You know, you can feel it in your stomach. I think it's because you're so excited about pride that you have those butterflies in your belly. That's very possible. Very possible. Oh, painted ladies and crying babies. They're crying because they're so elated from the joy that is pride. Yes. And somebody just noted these are color-coded pages. Absolutely. They are. Oh, oh, fancy dresses and flowing tresses. Oh, like this gorgeous thing right here. Oh, and I love this outfit so much. This oh. is on Emoji's wish list. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. Oh, loving kisses. So delicious. Mwah, mwah. Oh, mwah. <gasps> all invited and all excited. Because this day in June... <gasps> We're all, all united. united! Yay! Oh, Aww. that's this day in June. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, 
Take it away. So friends, one of the things you heard in our intro is that Emochi and I really, really work towards body liberation and fat liberation. We produce shows that are by fat folks for fat folks. And we also really, really love the idea that all bodies are cool. So we are going to read one of my favorite books, which is called Bodies Are Cool. And the images of this are some of the most inclusive we've ever seen in any books. And if you're reading along with us or you're listening along, there's a refrain on every page. Feel free to do it with me. Big bodies, small bodies, dancing, playing, happy bodies. Look at all these different bodies. Bodies are cool. I say to Emoji, you know, I've got this big body and my body so much of the time I was like, oh, what's my body like? And now I know my body is strong and soft and comfortable. And this body, this book really helps me remember that. Lanky bodies, squat bodies, tall, short, wide, or narrow bodies, somewhere in the middle bodies, bodies are cool. Round bodies, muscled bodies, curvy curves and straight bodies, jiggly wiggly fat bodies. That's like my belly and my arms. I love them. Bodies are cool. Look at them all dancing together. Dark skin, olive skin, every shade of brown skin, pinky pale or peach skin. Bodies are cool. They're doing a big mural. Poofy hair. Wavy hair, springy curls, whoop, whoop, or flat hair, lots of hair or no hair, bodies are cool. Leg hair, armpit hair, fuzzy lip and chin hair, brows that meet in the middle hair, bodies are cool. Oh, they're in a movie. Shh, we gotta be quiet. Hazel eyes, brown eyes, monolids and round eyes, blind and wearing glasses eyes, bodies are cool. Oh, look, they're all at an orchard at a farm stand. This looks very Vermont. Crooked faces, bumped nose faces, flat nose, full lips, gap tooth faces, stick out ears and thin lipped faces, bodies are cool. Freckled bodies, my body's a little more freckled now that it's summer. Dotted bodies, rosy patched or speckled bodies, dark skin swirled with light skin bodies. Bodies are cool. Hairy fingers, wrinkly fingers, dimpled elbows, chubbly, chubby fingers, wobbly arms and stubby fingers. Bodies are cool. Soft tummies, saggy tummies, flat or sticky outy tummies, innies, outies, pregnant tummies, bodies are cool. And this is a great reminder, everyone has a body for the water. Get in the water this summer, friends. Thick legs, scrawny legs, knobby knees and long legs, roll up to the table legs, bodies are cool. Faint scars, bold scars, stripes from getting bigger scars, marks that tell a story scars. Bodies are cool. This body, that body, his and her and their body, however you define your body, bodies are cool. Growing bodies, aging bodies, features rearranging bodies, magic ever-changing bodies, bodies are cool. And our last page, our big message, my body, your body, every different kind of body, all of them are good bodies. Why? Because bodies are cool. They're so cool. So cool. Yes. Love this book. Oh, oh, love that book so much. Oh my goodness. You got my next one. I have your book for you. Oh, it's one of my favorite books. It's called Just Add Glitter. Now, I had the honor of opening the Vermont legislature last month with reading this book to, to open the floor. Um, it was a really a true honor. Yeah. And uh, I got to spread some sparkle in the Vermont State House. And now we get to spread some sparkle for all of you. Yes. 
emoji. Yeah. Can I ask them if they want to participate at home? Can I offer something? Oh yeah. So friends, there's a part where emoji is going to tell us to add glitter. Mm -hmm. What I do is I do what I call glitter hands. So you put your glitter hands up and you just sprinkle as much or as little glitter as you want. Okay. Do that at home with me. We'd love for you to participate. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Got it. Just add glitter. Oh, right. Bored, ignored, or feeling down? Need some fancy in your town? Want some shine upon your crown? Just add glitter! Yes! Glitter hands. Love that. <laughs> oh. This book is so cool because it has glitter in it. Biodegradable, of course. Try a speck, a fleck, and a sprinkle. See how things begin to twinkle. A little here, a little there. Glitter, glitter, anywhere. Oh, yeah, and that part you like to Just throw toss your glitter. It. Toss yeah, the toss glitter. that yeah. glitter. Glitter hands. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. We love a glitter hand moment. <laughs> Is your bedroom such a bore? How about sparkle on your door? Could your art use something more? What do you think we're going to do? Just add glitter. Yes. Oh, we're tossing yeah, glitter. I love it. Y'all are is, in it. The chat is active. Okay. This is, um, this is the, I love this kitty, but this kitty does not seem very into the glitter, does it? No, thank you. Yeah. Do you have, anyone have cats at home? Do kitties at home? I want to know. Do they like glitter? Very important survey. This cat just does not seem into it. I don't know. Not on the cat? Yes, of course. I've got two cats too, and they love glitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, Imogen. That's what I get called when I'm in trouble. <laughs> My full name. A dash, a dusting, or a touch. It's so small, but does so much. A little here, a little there. Glitter, glitter, anywhere. Yeah, tossing that. Are your walls looking for glitz? Asking for more flashy bits? Time for putting on the Ritz? Just add glitter! Look at that shiny sparkly page. Oh, and the kitties come around to the glitter. Oh, and, oh, if you like tactile or sensory stuff, Oh, you can this is a good look it. for you. Look, it matches my makeup. It does. <laughs> oh, four cats and you haven't tried glittering them? Well, Do not. Or, Do not. Or maybe she's in trouble. I love some chaos. A pinch, a cupful, or a mound. Glimmer, shimmer by the pound. A little here, a little there. <gasps> glitter, glitter everywhere. Yeah. Oh. Have you made your whole <gasps> world gleam? Do you love this glistening dream? Then grab a ton, have fun, and scream. Just add, add glitter! glitter! Oh my goodness, there's so much glitter. Oh, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh-oh, stop. We've got enough. We're lost in all of this sparkly stuff. I thought we needed all this bling, but it's too much of a good thing. The glitter made it hard to see. What sparkles most is you and me. Oh, uh, Imogen, close your eyes. Yeah, close yeah, your eyes. Okay, yeah. hold my hand. Okay, hold on. Hold my hold hand. Down. Okay. Yeah. So I know we can't really see them. No. But I want you to imagine <laughs> the, all the people who are on this stream with us, right? Yes. And we're going to count down from three. And when okay. we open our eyes, we're going to be able to see all of them. And they are going to be... Just the most sparkly, beautiful, amazing, imaginative people. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, my there goodness. You are. Oh, friends, you are just sparkling and you are glowing and you're just full of magic and goodness. So much glitter. Oh. So sparkly and lovely. Oh, thanks for sparkling for us. Oh, you just made our days. Yay. Yeah, we do see you. We see you. We see your brains and your heart and your imagination and how kind you are to your friends and your loved ones. You're amazing. Oh, 
Are we ready? Yes. For some history. Absolutely. We've got <sighs> kind like Marsha. Now, fun fact, Marsha is my dog's name, but I don't think this book is about her. Well, emoji, what's your dog's full name? Marshmallow. <laughs> I don't think it's the same, Marsha. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. But this, we're going to learn all about LGBTQ leaders. <gasps> so important. The people who paved the way so pride could happen, so we could be here, so things like it's get, it gets better could happen. And so these are amazing folks that we like to learn more about, too. Absolutely. Kicking it right off with the book, who the book's even about, right? The namesake. Yeah. Marsha P. Johnson. You can be kind like Marsha. Marsha P. Johnson was an activist who took care of everyone in her community in New York City. And Marsha said, pay, pay it, it no, no mind. mind. That's right. Yeah. And then we have Harvey Milk. You can be inclusive like Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk brought people together for the cause of equality by talking about respecting everyone, even if they were different. And Harvey said, hope will never be silent. And Sappho. Friends, you can be expressive like Sappho. Sappho was a woman who wrote love poems about other women more than 2,000 years ago. One day, they will remember us. X Gonzalez. You can be outspoken like X. X Gonzalez is an activist who organizes millions of people and speaks out about making schools safer for everyone. X says it's time to start doing something. Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, friends, you can be creative like Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci invented so many cool creations. He made a robot, a scuba suit, and even a helicopter. Leonardo said, oh, learning never exhausts the mind. No, never. Sylvia Rivera. You, friends, can be determined like Sylvia. Sylvia Rivera was an activist who defended her community even when people told her to stop. Sylvia said, we have a right to be visible. Yeah. Frank Magisha. Oh, friends, you can be brave like Frank. Frank Magisha fights for equal rights for LGBTQ plus people in Uganda, where it is illegal to be LGBTQ plus. And Frank says, we will not give up until we have the future that we all deserve. Audre Lorde. You can be thoughtful like Audrey. Audre Lorde wrote about equal rights for women, Black people and gay people. She turned her thoughts about justice into writing that made others change their minds. We are powerful because we have survived. Eye of Han. You can be loving like I. Emperor Ai of Han ruled all of China, but he always made time for the man he loved the most, Dong Jian. I know your faithfulness. Frida Kahlo. Oh, you can be artistic like Frida. Frida Kahlo created beautiful paintings that often showed herself, sometimes with cute animals. True. She was proud of who she was. I am happy to be alive as long as I can paint. Creativity is so important. You know, um, Frida had a pretty cool body because she had brows that meet in right. the middle. Right. In Bodies Are Cool, we learned yeah. that it's okay wherever cool. you have body hair, right? Yeah. Frida was a pioneer of that. Lynn Conway. You can be smart like Lynn. Lynn Conway helped make the little computers that are used inside all electronic devices like tablets and the phones that we use today. Oh my gosh, it's the learning that's fun. Yeah, 
But the haters don't think that Lynn Conway <laughs> I know. is responsible for the phones they use to say bad things about us. Ooh. <laughs> Alberta Santos Dumont. Oh, you can be daring like Alberto. Uh huh. Alberto Santos Dumont created some of the first ever airplanes and other flying machines. And even when the airships would crash with him inside. What? <laughs> He'd keep trying again and again. Still, I persevered. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Alan L. Hart. You can be inventive like Alan. Alan L. Hart helped save thousands of lives as a doctor who pioneered the use of X-ray technology to detect illness in patients earlier than ever before. <gasps> I've been happier since I made this change than I ever have in my whole life. Josephine Baker. Friends, you can be resilient like Josephine. Josephine Baker created a successful life for herself, even though no one helped her. She became a world famous and beloved star who was also a spy and an activist and a mom. Oh, and those... any, mo any moms in the audience, if you're not also an activist and a spy, you're you're just not giving it your all. That's not true. You're all <laughs> superheroes. Oh my gosh. Let's see what Josephine said. Josephine said, the things we truly love stay with us always, locked in our hearts as long as life remains. Emoji, you're locked in my heart. Oh, forever. What yeah. happened to the key? Where'd it go? Oh, I swallowed it. Oh dear. Yep. In there forever. All these people are LGBTQ+, which means they have identities as diverse as the rainbow. Oh, resilient. Determined. Artistic. Brave. Inventive. Poetic. Creative. Outspoken. Smart. Loving. Inclusive. Thoughtful. Daring. And kind. And you can be like them by just yes. being you. you. That and was yeah. kind like Marsha. Awesome. I see some friends who were wondering about yeah. that. So kind like Marsha. Learning from LGBTQ plus leaders. That's by Sarah Prager. Yeah. All right. We actually have time to throw in another one. We're, we we're I know we get so nervous. We were like, oh, we got to fit it all in. Yeah. I think we should do the hips. Oh, all right. Yeah. We'll do it. We're going to do a movement one. So friends, if you're at home and you want to get up or you want to do it from your chair, wherever you're sitting, this is one where you can move and you can just, yeah, like just get your body rocking in whatever way feels good to you. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a lot of movement. Woo! Yeah, movement, ready. movement. I'm ready okay. to shake out some sillies. Shake those sillies out, friends. So this is by Little Miss Hot Mess. We one love of, Little we, Miss Hot Mess. We love her so much. And she has two books. If you're a drag queen and you know it, and the hips on the drag queen go swish, swish, swish. We're reading this one. They're really fun. They're so fun. And you'll recognize the, the tunes to both of them. Yeah. And let me just introduce you to all of the people in this book. So um, up here, we got Frida Beamy. We love her. And here's Jacqueline Jill. We have Mother Lucy Goosey. And over here, Cinderfella. Mm-hmm. Down here, Stinker Bell. <laughs> <laughs> we have Rita Book, very fitting. Pina Butta Jale. So fierce. Rosie Ring Around. And then my favorite, this is Ella Menopipi. Oh! Right. So silly. so silly. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. You ready to move? The hips, hips on the drag, drag queen go swish, 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 swish. The hips of the drag queen go swish. Ah! Ah! I got so excited I moved too much. <laughs> swish, swish, swish. All through the town. Look at them. Oh, they're <laughs> swishing. I'm knocking things over. I'm so excited. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. The hair on the drag queen goes up, up, up. Up, 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 up. The hair oh, on the drag queen, queen goes up, 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 all through the town. Yeah, and there's some Look good, at their hair. there's some clues here. Any guesses, put in the chat if you know what city these queens are oh. in. Yeah, the hips don't lie. All right. The shoes of the drag queen go stomp, 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 stomp. stomp, stomp. The shoes of the drag queen go stomp, stomp, stomp. 
all through the town. Yes. We've got a guest, San Francisco. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So observe it. Oh. The jewels. The jewels on the drag queen go bling, bling, bling. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, bling, bling. The jewels on the drag queen go bling, bling, bling. All, all through, through the, the town. town. This one's also a good giveaway. Yeah. All right, what's next? The shoulders of the drag queen go shimmy, 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 shimmy. The shoulders of the drag queen go shimmy, shimmy, shimmy all through the town. Oh yeah, there they are. There they are. They're shimmying. Yeah. Uh-huh. The cheeks of the drag queen go Blush, 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 blush. The cheeks of the drag queen. Blush, 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 all through the town. Look at all that blush. Emoji, you don't wear blush, do you? I don't. Not it doesn't look bit. it to me. It doesn't look it to me. Not a bit. No. A natural queen. Right I do. Here. I do like an all natural look. All natural. Um, can I say? Yeah. 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 The fingers of the drag queen go snap, 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 snap. The fingers of the drag queen go snap, 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 all through the town. Just chapstick and mascara. That's right. Natural. Yes, natural blush. Exactly. Yes. Also not applicable for me, but the mouth on the drag queen goes blah, 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 blah. The mouth of the drag queen goes blah, 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 all through the town. All right, the dance of the drag queen goes twirl, 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 twirl. The dance of the drag queen goes twirl, 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 all through the town. Yeah, and there they are. Yeah. Off they go. Bye, drag queens. <laughs> That's the hips on the drag queen goes swish, swish, swish. Did you shake your sillies out? I hope so. Yeah. All right, we've got our final book. This is one of our all-time favorites. And it's a band book. Absolutely, because a lot of times books that are really inclusive and wonderful, sadly, scare some people. Yeah. But we're here to read it because it's important to read these books. These books have great messages and really teach about inclusion and identity and being awesome. Yeah. And this book is called Red, A Crayon Story. He was red, but he wasn't very good at it. Oh, oh dear. Uh-oh. Hmm. Uh-oh. His teacher thought maybe he needed more practice. Yeah, I'll draw a red strawberry, and then you draw a red strawberry. You can do this. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. think he, do you think red can? I bet. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Red's yeah. gonna do it. Yeah. But he couldn't. Really. Uh, like this? Oh, my. Oh, let's try again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His mother thought he needed to mix with other colors. Okay, why don't you two go out and draw a nice round orange? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a really big one. Yeah, a really orange one. Because... Red. Yeah, red plus yellow, yellow makes orange. Oh, yeah. So they're going to draw an awesome orange. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Okay, here we go. I love an orange. So refreshing. Oh, so juicy. Ooh, juicy. Oh. oh. But they made a really big greenish one. Yeah. Oh, it looks moldy. Oh, no. Oops. Oops. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh. Oh, his grandparents thought that he wasn't warm enough. Oh, your class is making self-portraits for parents' night. Wear this warm red scarf. Oh, nice. It's so you. So you. So you. Yeah, yeah. So you. Oh. But it so wasn't. Emoji, look at all the portraits yeah. everybody drew. They're so great. I see Red's portrait because of the scarf here. Yeah. 
wow uh yeah green did a great job green, yeah they her oh, and goldie but yeah red wow oh dear yeah. oh dear mm -hmm. Everyone seemed to have something to say. Sometimes I wonder if he's even read at all. Don't be silly. It says so on his label. He came that way from the factory. Frankly, I don't think he's very bright. Yeah, I think he's lazy. Right, he's got to press harder. Really apply himself. Oh, you, you know, give him time. He'll catch on. Oh, of course he will. Yeah, right? But he didn't catch on. Green frog and a black sheep and a brown cow and a red ah! Oh. Oh. All the art supplies wanted to help. The masking tape thought he was broken inside. This will help hold you together. And the scissors thought his label was on too tight. Maybe one snip will do it. I thought maybe he wasn't sharp enough. Yeah, just stay still now. But even with all our help and all his hard work, he just couldn't get the hang of it. Oh. oh. One day, though, he met a new friend. Will you make a blue ocean for my boat? Hmm. Um, um, I, I can't. I'm red. Oh. Uh, will you try? So he did. Thank you. It's perfect. Um, you're welcome. It was easy. And he didn't stop there. Emoji, look at all the things Red drew. Blue bells and blue jeans and blue birds and blueberries and a blue whale. I'm... Blue! Oh. He, he was, was blue. 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 And everyone, everyone was, was talking. talking. Oh, my son is brilliant. Who could have known he was blue? I actually always said he was blue. Yeah, it was obvious. Yeah, his blue ocean really lifted me. All of his work makes me so happy. Oh, his blue strawberries, those are my favorite. He's so intense. Oh, yellow crayon. Oh, yeah, we are going to get together and make a green lizard. A really big one. I hear that he's working on a huge new project. He's really reaching for the sky. And he really, really was. The end. Aww. All right. We started with a song and we're going to end with a song. All right. I wish I practiced um, how to sign Dave's name, but we're just going to say it's time to pass it on over to Dave. Oh, so ready? okay. So it's goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Yeah. All right. So join us in singing along. Ready? <gasps> goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Yes. And you can catch us on Instagram if you want to reach out, dragstoryhour.vt. And my name is Emoji Nightmare, and this has been Katniss Everqueer. And it's been such a joy to be here with you. Thank you so much for reading with us. Thank you so much for listening to inclusive stories that celebrate all different types of people and all different types of ways of being and just lead with love and always think about just how you can express kindness to the people you're around. Back to you, Dave. Thanks Back for having to you, us. Dave. Thanks so much, all. Mwah! Hey, hey, hey. I'm on? All right. Hey, everybody. Yet again, thank you so, so, so much. Katniss Everqueer and Emoji Nightmare. I don't know if I got it correct, but I want to say goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. I may be close. That's the first time for me. But thank you so much for sharing your stories. I love you. Y'all got me over here in the back smiling. And my favorite part is not only glitter, but snap, snap, snap. But yet again, to learn more about them, exclamation mark, D-S-H. Can someone hit that in chat for me? Exclamation mark, D-S-H. For them sharing our new friends, for sharing their time. But goodbye. Y'all have a great one, please. And yet again, thank you for the time. I love that. Y'all got me cheesing for the stories. How'd y'all feel about it, chat? Because I loved it so, 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 so much. And thank y'all for hitting that for me in chat as well. 
But with that said, everybody, we're going to take another quick break before we bring out our next guest. If you missed me saying it before, Planet Fitness has partnered with It Gets Better to uplift, empower, and connect with LGBTQIA plus youth across the globe by helping them feel good in fitness. So during the break, they'll host a low-intensity training session specifically for Twitch streamers and viewers. I did the last one, so you should tag along for this one. It's really, really nice, especially because we sit during it. So yet again, this video is going to focus on how we can stay present through breathing exercises. You can learn more about our partnership in the pinned message in chat right there, or you can do it by doing exclamation mark PF. Can I get an exclamation mark PF? I believe I see it in the chat. Thank you for that very much. So enjoy it. And when we get back, Ariella will be taking over to introduce you all to the author showcase. And then today the show will end with Ray and Fee's discussion about youth voices art. I hope that you all have a happy Pride, and I'll see you all next week during Digital Pride Show on June 22nd. We'll be chatting about being an LGBTQIA plus voice actor. I'm a voice actor, and I'll be on the panel in gaming. With that said, see you later, everybody, and it's been great. So goodbye. Welcome to Low Intensity Indoor Training with Planet Fitness. As the judgment-free zone, we're partnering with the It Gets Better Project in support of uplifting, empowering, and connecting LGBTQ plus youth around the globe. Now here's the thing, physical health is important, of course, but our mental health is as well. With so many distractions in our lives, it can be easy to get into our head and not stay present. So let's take a moment, breathe, meditate, and bring everything back into focus. I'll get us started. Breathe in, breathe out, in. You have big fitness energy. You have perfect form. You feel great in fitness. You can totally do that 20 minute workout without checking your phone. You are flexible. You rule and your throne is the massage chair. Your ping is fast. You are not a noob. You have great connection. You do not need to text them back. You are amazing. You belong. You have big fitness energy. Wow, I feel refreshed, like massage chair refreshed. Just goes to show that even taking one minute to breathe, meditate, can bring you the energy boost that you need to keep going. All right, now where was I? Welcome everybody to our author showcase, a part of the It Gets Better Project's Digital Pride series. I am so honored to be here with all of you fantastic authors and then of course with our audience watching at home. It is truly a pleasure to be able to bring queer authors who have written seminal works to be able to talk a little bit about what they're doing, what their works look like, and of course in a time where we've all heard the news about author bans and book bands and anything like that, how important it is to have queer authors really sitting here, sharing the work that they've done that help us understand ourselves, help other people develop a sense of empathy and understanding for the queer experience, and just be able to bring us all together through the wonderful magic of books and art. So again, I'm so excited all of you are here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And yeah, let's get started. We're going to do the best thing, introductions. So if everybody is willing to just share your name, your pronouns, and give us a brief introduction of who you are, I'm going to start with you, Maya. 
Hello, thank you for having me. My name is Maya Kobabe. I use the pronouns EM Air. I am the author of Gender Queer, a memoir. So I write and illustrate. I'm a cartoonist. This is my first full length book, but I also have short stories published in other collections, and I'm excited to share with everyone today. Trung, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Trung Ling Nguyen. I am uh, an artist and writer as well. My debut graphic novel is called The Magic Fish, which I'll be reading from later. Um, I have done some short work for DC and Marvel, and I've done little projects here and there, and The Magic Fish is my first full-length graphic novel, so I'm still very uh, jazzed about it, um, and I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you. And Jonathan, you're next. Hi, I'm Jonathan Evison. Thank you very much for having me. I'm the uh, author of eight, nine novels. Uh, Lawn Boy is, uh, I think, my fifth novel, and it's just come out of the woodwork again, and is now kind of my my main focus lately. I often write outside the purview of my personal experiences, and while I had uh, some of those experiences Mike had in the book that were so controversial, when I do write outside my purview, I always work with an individual or many individuals whose experience mirrors what I'm trying to trying to capture most. And so anyway, I'm just glad to have a seat at the table. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Abdi Nazemian. Um, I am the author of five books, uh, including Like a Love Story. And my latest, which I'll read from later, is called Only This Beautiful Moment, um, which came out last week. And uh, yes, very exciting. And um, yeah, I'm also a screenwriter and TV writer. So I'm currently on strike. Uh, please research what's happening with the WGA and uh, the reasons why we're on strike, because they affect all artists and all humans and workers, honestly. And um, I started writing novels because it was very hard to get my personal stories, like Iranian queer stories made in Hollywood. So I'm very proud of being an author and of telling these stories. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for being here and for giving us a quick introduction. All of your works are so fantastic. And I love having a couple of debuts happen. Well, three debuts, but uh, Abdi with your new book coming out last week and then Trung. I'm so excited. The work is beautiful. I'm really happy to be able to share it with our audience here for Pride. Um, so again, love a good round of introductions. I'll introduce myself. My name is Ariella Asseline. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm the manager of programs and operations here at the It Gets Better Project. And one of our resident bookworms at the beginning of the pandemic lockdown, um, I hosted an author series where I had the pleasure of, again, getting to interview so many wonderful authors and those live on our Instagram. And I've just been missing it so much that I'm really happy that we got to be able to do this again here. So now we are into the very beautiful and exciting part and what I've been really looking forward to, the readings. So I know a few of you gave a little bit of an introduction into your book, but I would love for you to be able to talk a little bit about why you chose what you're going to be reading from, if there's any inspiration there behind the stories, what it felt like for you to be able to read them, whatever you would like to share there. And then, yeah, we're just going to do a quick little reading from your pieces. So we're going to, again, start with you, Maya. Thank you. Um, I will be reading from Genderqueer. This is a graphic novel, so I'm just going to be reading the text, but hopefully you'll be able to see the images. I chose a short section that is from my high school years. I thought that would be appropriate for this event, um, which is when I was a teenager in like the mid 2000s. We're talking pre Glee. There was way less representation than there is today, and I didn't have a lot of language for my own experiences. And so I spent a lot of time just questioning, wondering, deeply uncertain about sort of like what the gender feelings I had and how those inter intersected with sexuality and other parts of my identity. So I just wanted to read a little bit from that part. Beautiful. So this is starting on page 64. The main trait I've always been attracted to is androgyny, which made categorizing my sexuality difficult. Did the girl with a buzz cut catch my eye because she was a girl or because she was dressed as a boy? Was it his seemingly feminine or masculine qualities that drew me to the long-haired boy in choir? My deepest emotional relationships have always been with women. Did that mean I was a lesbian? But my sexual fantasies involved two male partners. Was I a gay boy trapped in a girl's body? The knowledge of a third option slept like a seed under the soil. This seed put out many leaves, but it didn't have the language to identify the plant. I wish I had a gender-neutral name. I wish I was a boy. I feel like something is wrong with me. I hate my breasts. I never want to have sex. I never want kids. I wish I had short hair. In high school, I began to theorize that I'd been born with two half souls, one female and one male. I invented and named a lost male twin who had always felt like he should be a girl. 
If only I could just find him, we would finally both feel like whole, complete people. The word transgender entered my vocabulary in the summer before high school. I noted this in a journal entry in June 9th of 2003, that there had been a lot of articles on gay issues in the San Francisco Chronicle, including a profile of a lesbian whose partner was taking testosterone and had switched to male pronouns. But where do I fit into all of this? If I was trans, wouldn't I be saying I am a boy, not I wish I was a boy? Wouldn't I be more sure? And if I am trans, am I a gay boy or a straight boy or a bisexual boy? Except I'm not sure if I want to have sex. Does that mean I'm asexual? If I'm asexual, does my gender even matter? So I could just be a girl, but I don't feel like a girl. What am I? I didn't share these questions even with my friends from the GSA. Instead, I poured my confusion into journal after journal. If only I could switch between sexes whenever I wanted, like Ranma from, from Ranma one half. Here's a quote from an entry I wrote in 2004 when I was 15. I don't want to be a girl. I don't want to be a boy either. I just want to be myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. I I love that. And I love that you picked this piece, especially from high school. You know, our target audience are 13 to 18 year olds. And I know that there are so many kids that are feeling exactly those feelings today. We hear from them. We have our youth ambassadors who share exactly that. And I'm just so excited that you shared this. Thank you. Yeah. And Trung, now for you. Um, so because I also made a graphic novel, um, I hopefully you'll be able to see some of the images, but I also really want the readers to be able to come up with their own sense of dialogue for how the images interact with the text. And so I'm actually going to be reading my author's note, which I know is a little strange, but um, it I think that was the piece of writing in the book where I felt like I finally had a point um, in The Magic Fish. And as I was creating the story, it became more evident to me that it was important for me to express that oftentimes the ways that we describe ourselves and our queernesses uh, is subject to change and it can shift and it can be quite a bit of a challenge to bring people along with us and sort of invite them into that world and give them the right tools by which to address us and the additional challenge of navigating those specific queernesses while also figuring out how to bridge linguistic and cultural barriers can be very challenging as well. And the magic fish speaks to that experience specifically. Um, so I'll read very briefly from my author's note. Uh, I set out to tell a very small story. One of the odd challenges of writing a story about characters living within any social margins is the gravity of the marginalization itself. It is such a dense thing, seeming to insist that all the pieces of the story should orbit around it. Immigrant stories are like this. As compassionate readers, we sometimes intellectualize difficult human experiences to keep them at arm's length. There is an appropriate vernacular, a set of vocabulary words in a syllabus, and a common language established for the sake of facilitating dialogue. At our worst, we find the stories of immigration reduced to character tropes employed, for example, by the news for a disaffected viewer. The stories start and end with the arc of an exodus, and we forget that things continue to happen ever after, and that ever after does not happen for everyone all at once. At our best, we want to take a bird's eye view of the situation in an effort to be as comprehensive as possible. In this way, Immigrants seem to take on the flatness of fairy tale archetypes as interchangeable pieces in recurring stories of upheaval and diaspora. In both cases, we prefer to look in from the outside, all the quiet yearnings, the ambient heartaches, and the thousand other little indignities of feeling lost in your own tongue are overlooked in our best intentioned efforts to be broad and comprehensive. And so I set out to tell a very small story about a boy and his mother figuring out how to express love without the benefit of an appropriate vernacular, a set of vocabulary words in a syllabus, or a common language to facilitate their dialogue. I wanted to explore how stories can serve both as an escape and as an anchor for us in our real lives, and maybe for at least one story, decenter the gravity of marginalization to tell a story about one of the little pieces that orbit around it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for sharing that. That it's gorgeous. And I love, I don't know. I feel like I've been reading a lot about that, about the different stories that especially that like young queer immigrants, I believe that that was a story that our, um, we just had a few of our staff members create a blog for AAPI month. And I think that that was a common theme among them. And I just thank you so much for sharing. That was really beautiful. Jonathan, now for you. Um, okay. Well, you know, when we talk about uh, when, when books are banned or challenged, uh, as we all know that, you know, the vast majority of the books that have been banned or challenged deal with characters of color, or LGBTQA plus characters. And, and, and we deny access to these stories to these people. Obviously, what we're doing is denying young readers the chance to have recognition and to see themselves in narratives. And I grew up having grown up in an affluent community, dirt poor. I always sort of felt marginalized in that way. And as a young man spending time in the library, looking for a body of literature that ultimately I was able to find in writers like Richard Russo and Larry Brown and, and working class writers, but always feeling like I was being handed novels that were about the seating arrangements at a Cape Cod wedding or, you know, some, some conceit that was just so beyond the purview of my life. Um, so this is a, this is kind of uh, autobiographical, in the sense of uh, this is this is about Mike Mike's association with librarians and librarians, you know, what they've meant to him in his life. As kids, Nate and I spent untold hours in the library. My, my mom was at work. We ate bruised apples and crumbling saltines, napping on the quilted sofas. The library was the most stable thing in our lives. The only thing in the whole damn society that said to little Mike Munoz, here you go, kid. It's all yours for the asking. No matter that your ears were dirty and your hair was greasy, no matter that your mentally challenged big brother didn't have much of an indoor voice, that he tended to throw books and pee on the bathroom floor and scare the hell out of the count clownfish. At the library, a little ferret of a kid like me had a chance. The only currency he needed was a library card. For two hours, waiting for Nick to get off at work at Les Schwab, I scanned the fiction section for distraction. What I wanted was a book written by a guy who worked as a landscaper or a cannery grunt or a guy who installed heating vents. Something about modern class struggle in the trenches. Something plain spoken without all the shiver thin coverlets of snow and all the rest of that luminous prose. Something that didn't have a pretentious quote at the beginning from some old geezer poet that gave away the whole point of the book. Something that didn't employ the fishbowl lens or the prismatic narrative structure or any of that crap they teach rich kids out in cornfields. I wanted a book that grabbed me by the collar and implored me to conquer my fears and embrace the unknown. I wanted a novel that acted as a clarion call for the disenfranchised of the world. Not 250 pages of navel gazing about the nuances of saddle making topped off with some hokey epiphany. I wanted realism, grit. I wanted my transcendence with grease under the fingernails and unpaid bills piling up on the countertop. Where were the books about me? Maybe I should write the goddamn American, great American landscaping novel. Why shouldn't I have a voice? Just because I never went to college? Because I haven't traveled the world or lived in New York City or fought in Iraq or done anything else of distinction? I suppose you could make a strong argument for any one of those. But I believe the world could use the great American landscaping novel. After all, most of us are mowing someone else's lawn one way or another. And most of us can't afford to travel the world or live in New York City. Most of us feel like the world is giving us a big fat middle finger when it's not kicking us in the face with a steel toed boot. And most of us feel powerless, motivated, but powerless, entertained, but powerless, informed, but powerless, fleetingly content, most of the time broke, sometimes hopeful, but ultimately powerless and angry. Don't forget angry. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. The unsung heroes. People don't talk about libraries enough. So thank yeah, you. they're really, no the, yeah, librarians are being pushed out of their jobs right now, being threatened. I mean, I've talked to many librarians of, like me, I've had death threats and my, I'm sure you've experienced this too, but librarians who, who are having not only their livelihood, but their very safety, personal safety threatened because they're going to bat for, for us. Yeah, I wanted to, before I read, um, the library, I spend quite a bit of time doing school visits and librarians and, and English teachers and educators are the heroes. They're the ones dealing with this every day. You know, authors tend to get the attention. Also, I talk to so many librarians and teachers, including a relative who's a teacher who are often spending their own money to get these books for kids because they can't get them approved out of the budget. So 
you know, that's happening quite a bit too. And it's, it's pretty chilling. Like the first person I came out to was my English teacher a decade before I came out to my family. And I had another teacher who was out at the time who showed me Paris is Burning and the Life of Times and Harvey Milk and Morris and queer films that changed my life. So to think that we're living in a world where those educators aren't able to provide a safe space for kids is enraging um, and sad. I will now read. <laughs> So, so my new book, Only This Beautiful Moment, is um, about three generations of men in the same Iranian family, two of whom are queer. Um, it takes place in the 1930s, the 1970s, and the present day. And it's very much about the way that queer history, um, the history of U.S. intervention in the Middle East, and just personal secrets affected this family's journey back and forth from Los Angeles to Tehran over time. Um, and the passage I chose to read is, is the one that takes place in present or 2019 present. Um, and it's about a character, Mood, who has gone back to Tehran because his grandfather there is sick. And before going to Tehran, he's kind of wiped his social media because he's afraid of anyone knowing he's gay. He's kind of gone in with this fear of what could feasibly happen to him. And then his fabulous cousin, Ava, who he's never met, um, takes him to a party in Tehran. And I'll just read a very short passage from this party scene. She pulls up to a quiet street and screeches her car to a halt in front of a gated home. She presses a button outside the gate and we're buzzed inside. She takes my hands and leads me in. Music is blaring, something ambient and dreamy. There's smoke from cigarettes in the air, obscuring my view of the guests. She wasn't kidding. They are fabulous, one more stylish than the other. There's Siamak, she says, pointing to a tall, lanky, and scruffy guy. His curly mop of black hair is pulled back by a hairband, letting his open face catch the light. He quickly glances our way, then turns his attention back to the guy he's huddled with in a doorway. I'll wait to introduce you later. He looks, uh, busy. Do you mean? I want to ask if she means that he's flirting with the other guy. It certainly sounds that way. She clearly gets what I'm thinking. With a smile, she says, a lot of my friends are queer. As the smoke clears, I start to piece together what I'm seeing. Scattered among the crowd are men holding hands, women flirting with each other. I don't know what I was expecting to find at an Iranian party, but it wasn't this. Not everyone here is queer, obviously, she says, but everyone is open-minded. It's a lot of art students. I look around. So many of these young people have turned their bodies into art, experimenting with hair color, piercings, tattoos. One guy has half his head shaved, the other buzzed and dyed turquoise. Almost all the guys have at least one piercing in their ears. Most of them have more. There are girls with smoky eyes, people who wear all black, people who stun in bright colors. I should tell Ava I'm gay. I should tell her I've had a boyfriend for four years, but somehow it all feels too much for this moment. So all I say is, this is so cool. I'll stop there. That feels like a good place to stop. <laughs> Wow. Again, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so excited. Like a Love Story was one of my top books that year. And so I'm just so excited to be able to hear more from you and from all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to share to share that. It's such a special mix of written work, graphic work. I'm so excited for our audience to be able to see your beautiful artwork across the screen. And yeah, as artists, especially for the queer community, uh, your pillars and the fact that like little queer kids are able to read your work and be able to see themselves in it or see other parts of their community in it is, it's truly indescribable. And I wish I had my own words to be able to share the impact there. I just think, again, thinking about like myself as a young teen, like being able to find those like queer works and holding a physical book, even when you know, you didn't have anything else tangible that you could point to in your identity or anything that you could really like solidly hold. The fact of like holding something and hiding it and having it be yours is just unbelievable. And I'm so, I'm just internally grateful for you being able to keep on this magical work. So thank you. We are going to go into some questions and answers. So whoever feels like answering, please jump in. i more than happy to hear all of your thoughts. I think the first one that we have is pretty timely for where we are. I know that a lot of you have covered this. And Maya, I'm going to direct this to you first because genderqueer is 
one of the most banned books out there right now. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, we've been seeing an increase in limitations for books, specifically ones that feature queer characters and topics, especially from conservative lawmakers across the United States. And my question is just, what have your thoughts on these book bans been across the United States? And why do you think it's important for queer youth to be able to continue having access to these books? Obviously, it really saddens and frustrates and often angers me that so many books are being challenged and we are seeing books being removed from library shelves. I very much see it any time a book is removed as a community impoverishing itself. The library, as many of us have said, is such a resource. I too grew up going to the library almost every single week and checking out like a huge stack of books every week. And like, aside from just providing like books and narratives, libraries are also one of very few places that you can sit for free without buying anything. They usually have drinking fountains and bathrooms and air conditioning, free Wi-Fi, and then people who can help you with things like filling out a job application, doing your taxes. Like libraries are such a resource and it is so, so hard to see them being attacked right now in our country because they're like a common good. They're like parks. It's like something for everyone. Um, and then specifically in seeing queer narrative removes, I want to reference something you said earlier, which is like many queer young people don't know if their identities will be accepted in their family or community. And yeah, reading a book safely and perhaps secretly at the library is maybe one of the only ways they could access information about it. Even though I did grow up in a loving and accepting family and I knew that coming out for me would be safe, I still heavily search for queer books at the library. Um, and it, I hate the idea that that is like not available to other people. So yeah, it's really, it's really hard. And any, any of these books with minority voices, books that are touching on the history of racism in America, race, and the topics like sexual assault, bullying, suicide, sex ed, sexual health, abortion, like these are such important topics specifically for teenagers to be able to access. And in general, I would much prefer teens be getting information about those topics from books than from random internet searches. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it really hurts to see these books removed. Yeah, I mean, I I have very tricky feelings toward this. I mean, I started to get the worst of the book banning of Like a Love Story relatively recently and a lot of online attacks toward me and my character and all the same lies I'm sure you've had spread about you. And, and I certainly went through the reactionary anger and then the sadness. And, you know, I think the thing that most, that I, that I am most, focused on now is not letting these people rob me of my values and my human experience. And the truth is I came from a very, I come from a very conservative culture. I mean, one of the reasons I chose that passage is I'm, I'm from Iran. I was born there. My parents were quite conservative growing up. I didn't have an easy coming out. I straddle an intersectional experience where I remain deeply, um, I just deeply loving toward my parents who I love. And I think they genuinely love me. And yet I accept there's always going to be a divide there. And part of the irony for me when I speak at schools and I hear that parents complain or they want to ban me is so much of what I talk about is how do we build empathy for those who don't agree with us or who we are in that moment? Because that's been my journey with my culture and family, which doesn't mean everyone can do that. Some people aren't safe to do that. But I know for myself and the art that I make, which is trying to build a bridge between Iranian culture, which is quite conservative and queer phobic and, and my queer community is, is my values are of oneness and, and, um, you know, human connection. And I just can't let these book banners and their attacks turn me into them. Like I can't, because if I do that, I won't be in a space to create the kind of art that I am. And that's like a hard thing because I get angry. Like I get, I see these things and I'm in a rage, but, but then that empowers them even more. And I just think it's so hard with young people because I do visit them and it's like, I want them to have connection and spirituality and freedom and fun. And it's just so hard because it feels like they're always on the defensive. And how do you do that when you're always on the defensive? So, I mean, I don't have all the answers, but that's some of what goes through my mind. I don't, I'm lucky because I have two 11 year olds being raised here and in an environment where anyone can be who they want to be. But you know, at 11, they already have mm -hmm. trans kids in their class and non-binary kids and kids who are coming out. And it's just not a big deal. And it's wonderful. And if people could just see that as well. So it's like, as I just think there's always this balance between always focusing on the negative. If we don't show people what the positivity looks like, how are they going to stop being afraid? Completely. 
us at the It Gets Better Project, one of our huge focuses is that queer joy, being able to find, you know, we really, our idea is like, if you find our content, like on social media or on YouTube, just like wherever you find it, that it is a break in between everything else that you're seeing that you're able to just like, if you're seeing about book bans or, you know, legislation that's happening that you're able to see like a video about what it's like to be, you know, a queer Asian person sharing their story. And that is such a beautiful uplifting moment that I love and cherish so deeply as like one of my own ethos. And then especially about working here. And I really just want to plug one of our fantastic programs. Well, our education program is all fantastic where we bring our stories, other queer stories into classrooms to be able to do two things, mostly to be able to support queer educators and students and seeing their material in classrooms where potentially that curriculum isn't super involved, but also for non-queer students and educators to be able to develop that sense of empathy for the stories that they're seeing, that this might be the first time that they're seeing somebody share this intimate journey that they've been on and how deeply inspiring can that be you're in a classroom and that material is being brought to you. And I have the distinct pleasure of being involved in one of our fantastic programs, our 50 states, 50 grants, 5,000 grant, 5,000 voices, my own program, um, where we have distributed grants to 50 different schools. And we're just starting up our new cycle across the United States where you have schools in Alabama, in New York, Texas, Utah that are so many of them are doing little queer libraries or adding queer books to their GSAs or just, yeah, like being able to bring in queer stories, authors, teachers, speakers, be able to talk about those things. So what you're saying about these people that are really fighting for young queer kids, a hundred percent, like the teachers, administrators, faculty that are a part of this program are just the coolest people in the world. And what they're able to do for their kids is just it's indescribable. And it's really, yeah, those are the people that we really need to be supporting. So thank you so much for sharing all of those perspectives. Um, I'd love to switch it up a little bit and just ask each one of you, is there a piece of queer work or art in general, a book, it could be a poem, a zine, just some piece of media that you feel like everybody needs to read? I can say that the book that probably influenced me the most when I was writing Gender Queer was Fun Home by Alison Bechtel, which is a classic. I think many people have heard of it. It has won many awards. It's turned into a Broadway musical. Um, I, it touches me very much. And I read it when I was in college. I've read it many times. And everything from the story told to the way the story was told, the art, the interweaving of the art and the narrative really, really impacted me. And so I, I would say that that one is definitely kind of a classic at this point, and we will may have encountered it. But if you haven't, um, I recommend that you check it out from the library. Abdi, I'm gonna, I'm seeing. Okay, okay sure. Um, you know, in terms of like, the person who most opened my eyes to intersectional queer experience, it's James Baldwin, who remains mm. my favorite writer. So I'm very James Baldwin. But also, I'm just a lot of my books are about history. I very much believe that young people need to be grounded in their own history. And all of us as in the queer community have had histories that have been hidden from, from us, from our loved ones, from our classrooms. And so I'm a big believer in just immersing yourself in history. Like I was in London recently and I went to the Bishopsgate Institute, which is their queer archives. And I just went through all these old, all this old queer media from the seventies onward. And it was just so, I'm like, just to immerse yourself in what were queer people talking about back then? What was being written about in the queer newspapers? And all of these are archived. I mean, here in LA, we have the One Foundation and in London, they have that. I mean, I, I just love reading about, you know, there are always going to be those authors like James Baldwin, who we talk about all the time, but also just like immersing yourself in what people were, were engaged in. And it was chilling to read this stuff from the 70s because so much of what they were talking about was teachers. I mean, this was the time when they didn't want queer teachers. It was medicine. It was access to to queer doctors, which again, we're dealing with a lot of attacks. So it was just really, for me, this illuminating thing of, wow, we're still dealing with the same issues. Mm -hmm. You can't say James Baldwin now. Okay, well, you know, the other guy I was going to mention was Christopher <laughs> Isherwood, who, you know, Berlin stories and Prater Violet, and because this ties back into history too. I mean, Isherwood's writing about being gay in the 1930s in in in, you know, 
in, in the in the lead up to Nazi Germany too. So like that, but also something you said earlier used for me, what is the operative word in fiction, which is empathy. Mm-hmm. And so like, even as we're talking about reading inside our experience, I feel like it's equally important to always try to read anything and everything and read outside of our experience because that's what fiction does. It is the greatest empathic window humankind has ever created and nothing allows you to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. And this is why I write outside my purview. This is why, because just the act of writing novels for me, I mean, I've been told to stay in my lane, but then then I'm not going to write at all because the idea for me is to become a more expansive person. Mm. I write for empathy as I read for empathy. I want to understand the human experience across the board as much as I can. So I want to operate within things that are outside the purview of you know, I got 80 years on this planet and a limited amount of experience, but there's a whole world of people that have existed. And and so, I I mean, just generally speaking, I say read anything and everything, even that even that stuff that is diametrically opposed to your worldview. I think it's really important to to dabble in that as well. Uh, just the more perspectives you can understand, I think the more expansive you become as a person. And like I said, reading things like Isherwood and James Baldwin Young, you know, completely informed my, you know, my desire to want to write a queer character, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and sort of understand it. And thank goodness I had guidance and thank God I had queer friends and a queer editor and people to help help me navigate that because, you know, it's my responsibility if, if I'm going to write outside the purview of my experience, which I always do pretty much because who wants to read about a fat middle aged white guy anymore, you know, sitting around drinking beer, which is my life. You know, uh, you, 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 you know, your responsibility is to 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 educate yourself mm-hmm. you know, in the experience of others. And empathy is it always comes down to empathy for me. Mm. Absolutely. I think for me, my favorite author is Jeanette Winterson. Um, and I, I feel like people don't talk about her work enough in terms of like the the ways that she writes about que- her own queerness and the ways that she explores prose, like I think is really beautiful. I don't like whenever it's really strange for me because I feel like I should be recommending more graphic novels and there are a lot of really wonderful, beautiful graphic novels out there. But I think most of the media that I consume kind of falls outside of the places where I work because I feel more of a sense of relief (laughs) reading things that I'm not, you know, making. And so I can read it with a slightly different eye. Um, And so Jeanette Winterson's work um, is fantastic. Uh, Her first book um, is Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, um, which was one of the first books that I read that had like a that explored queerness in like a very specific way. And it felt safe for me at the time because I was like, well, this isn't anything to do with me because this is an English woman and she's growing up in a Pentecostal community and she's exploring her lesbian, like same sex sexual attraction. And so I'm very, uh, so I felt kind of safe to be like, oh, I'm empathizing with this person and I'm not internalizing my queerness. But by the time um, I got a little bit older, I I read um, Lighthouse Keeping and that was one of the most kind of like, breathtakingly beautiful pieces of prose that I'd ever witnessed up until that point in my life. And so Jeanette Winterson has always kind of been the author that I I recommend to people when they want, you know, books that, you know, express um, and and explore queerness in these sort of specific ways and also just has really beautiful prose. Mm. So beautiful. So we're almost on time, but I would love to just, this is my favorite question to ask anybody is just, what is your piece of advice to little queer kids? What is something that you wish that they would know and take with them into the world? I usually tell young people, like you are the expert on your own identity. And even if other people are saying things about who you are or not maybe listening to what you're trying to tell them about who you are, maybe not respecting your pronouns, it doesn't change who you are inside. Like you know yourself and you get to choose how you want to present and how you want to be and move and act through the world, even if it's not right in this moment, which is of course the message of the It Gets Better project. Like you might not be able to do it right now, but I promise in the future, like you'll be able to move closer and closer to that true authentic presentation of yourself and you will find community around it. And I know for me, like publishing a book talking about gender has led me to meet such a wide community of people who I can relate to, readers, writers, fellow authors who say, I've really been thinking about this too. I've been questioning this as well. This really mirrors my experience. And I promise that you will also find that as you step into yourself. And also if you're making queer work, people will relate to it. It's a very good way to find community. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll jump in with that because it's I have a bit of similar advice. I think as queer people, we often have to work to find community. Um, I know in my experience, I didn't come from, as I mentioned, a culture that readily accepted me. Um, as many immigrant, you know, queer people have told me, they many of us have the same experience, which is we have to come out again and again and again and again <laughs> because our families and our communities compartmentalize it away or deny it or conveniently forget it or however that looks for you. Um, and I think what I've come to accept as a, as a grown up who happens to love my family, but knows that there are certain aspects of my queer identity that they're not going to give me what I want from is I've had to find other people, other communities to, um, to give me what I need um, and fill those needs. And I think that's something I wish I had been told when I was young. I think I did start to find little pieces of that in educators and teachers and friends, but I didn't really understand the concept of chosen family when I was young. It was never explained to me. And, and I do think it's a really powerful concept for us because in some ways it allows us to love our, our actual, our biological families or, you know, families more if, if we take the pressure off, but also it, it makes us realize that there's a piece of us that we have to go find. And there's a, there's an active element to it. That's really powerful and beautiful when you actually like put together your own community. And um, I mean, God, when I moved out to Los Angeles, like me and all my friends gave each other family names. Like I was daddy. I still, people still call me Ab Daddy. And that's why. And my friend was mommy and we had aunties and granny and we literally created a family. And that's something I feel like queer people can do. And mm -hmm. it can be hard as you're going through it, but it's a gift. It's really a gift to be able to have that kind of community. Mm -hmm. I think for me, one of the things that I always come back to with younger queer people is um, I want them to prioritize their safety. Mm -hmm. um, I think kind of growing up in the 2000s, um, subtlety was not the the, <laughs> the word of the decade. Um, and so I, I did always kind of feel like coming out needed to be this all or nothing thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think today, like as an adult, I can say, hey, like I have a strong sense of safety and a strong sense of self and i you know can feel a sense of responsibility for the ways that i express my queerness and and i'm comfortable with that at this point in my life but if you're a young person and, and you are beholden to the other forces around you i want you to be safe first it's your job to survive and then thrive when you can and i don't want you to feel like you owe it to someone else to come out like you owe it to you to find ways to be happy and to make sure that you find a place eventually where you can see that things get better. It doesn't have to be good enough for you right now. You get to decide when better is good enough for you. So beautiful. I, I've been thinking about it with grief specifically. It just comes up in a lot of the book that I'm books that I'm reading that I read somewhere that it's the grief doesn't change inside of you. You are able to grow around it. And I think about that a lot for like young queer kids that just, you might, these feelings, you are able to get stronger through them. That like, we always talk about that here at the Gets Better Project, that like, even if the circumstances don't get better, you get better and you're able to navigate them even more beautifully and with such resiliency and grace as you're able to go through your life. So you just have to be able to do it. You have to be able to be here to be able to go through your journey. And I, again, I'm just so grateful for all of you for taking the time out of your day to be here with us during this wonderful pride celebration. I am so, so happy. And everybody read their books. They're available mm -hmm. everywhere that books are sold. And even in other places you can find them. Um, so, and at your local library, so you can go there too. So thank you all so much have a wonderful pride. And for everybody, please, yes, we have books on the screen. Screenshot them up <laughs> now. Um, yeah, happy pride. And let's be a part of the It Gets Better Project digital pride experience right here. Thank you all. And now part of our creator showcase, we're going to have our youth voices we share a little bit of their artwork with you. I've had the distinct pleasure of seeing their work and hearing them describe it. And trust me, it is some of the most beautiful and thoughtful work that you'll ever see. I'm really excited that you'll be able to be a part of our creator showcase. With them is our fantastic senior education coordinator, Ray Sweet Sandoval. Take it away. 
Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Digital Pride Experience Youth Voices panel. I am so excited to be here with Fee, one of our incredible youth voices. My name is Ray Sweet Sandoval. I use they, them pronouns. I'm the Senior Coordinator of Education at the It Gets Better Project, and I get to work with the incredible youth voices um, that, that work with the It Gets Better Project. Um, Fee, please introduce yourself. Hello, y'all. My name is Fee Chanda. I'm 16 years old. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm a student activist and organizer. Fee, thank you so much for joining me. Um, just to give y'all like an idea of like what does Youth Voices mean? Youth Voices is our um, incredible group of LGBTQ plus young people ages 13 to 18 from all across the U.S. They are youth ambassadors. They work with us for a full year, um, sharing their story, sharing their art, sharing their activism. Um, and they just do really incredible work. And I'm really excited to talk more about some of that work and especially Fee's incredible art. Um, so Fee, I really, I'm really excited. One of the things that really stood out when you applied for Youth Voices was your art pieces. Um, and I'm just really excited for these folks to to get to witness your art and, and hear from you what what it all means to you. So please let's let's dive in. Um let's see, let's see some art. Okay, yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on. So I'm going to start out with my first piece, We Are Everywhere, which is essentially like a digital art piece I made on Adobe Photoshop. And this piece is kind of supposed to be like a reminder of queer and trans joy, especially during a time when there's so much um, like laws and like bans that are against like our very identity. And this was actually a project I submitted to It Gets Better during Transgender Awareness Week, I think. Um, and was like showcased on their social media. And it's basically a reminder about like, no matter how much like the law tries to silence us, no matter how much like, you know, um, discriminatory like family members or like schools or people around us try to silence us, trans people and queer people will always be there. We're always gonna find a way to thrive and we're always gonna find a way to empower each other and stay strong. That is amazing. I love this piece so much. Like as a non-binary and trans person, it, I, I love feeling intergalactic. Um, and so this piece is just so cool. And, um, I love that, that inspiration behind it. Thank you so much. What, what do we, what do we have next? Yeah, sure. Um, next on the list is, um, uh, my next piece, Neon Limbo, which is a rare example of me actually doing physical art because as much as I think traditional art is pretty, I'm just so much more used to like digital art that it was a bit hard for me to start on this piece. Um, but yeah, just getting started. So I used like very, very vibrant colors um, to kind of like show the contrast between the very serious expression of the person there, you know, being surrounded by all these like super vibrant colors. And this is actually not an lgbtq plus related piece um it's actually related to like my, being autistic and like you know the idea that people with invisible disabilities are kind of um not really acknowledged for who they are mainly because today we see a lot of people judging others by what they can physically see or what is obvious to the naked eye um and a lot of times people with like like invisible illnesses or invisible disabilities fall under the radar simply because what they're going through isn't expressed physically. Um, so this piece is kind of representative of like the loneliness and isolation that people like me feel. And I know like a lot of times in my life, I've definitely felt like misunderstood by like whether it's family members, friends, um, simply because I didn't have the terminology and the words to explain what I was going through. Um, and I wasn't like in a place where I could outwardly empower myself and really be open about who I was. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's about it. <laughs> that is, it's incredible. I mean, this piece, I feel it can, you know, be interpreted in a lot of different ways that I think a lot of LGBTQ plus people specifically can connect to. Um, but I love the, the very specific decision to have it represent, you know, the experience of, of being autistic and being isolated in your experience. Um, I think that's really, really powerful and also not represented enough in art and in media. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, add, yeah, yeah, go um, ahead. I also want to add that like a lot of the pieces I make like aren't like outwardly 
um, it's not always clear what they're supposed to represent. Like, for instance, a lot of my LGBTQ plus pieces don't, like, have, like, a pride flag in them. They don't have, like, a transgender flag. Um, and the reason I do this is because I want a lot of my pieces to be open to interpretation. Um, because although, like, when I make a piece, I'm thinking of a specific topic in mind, I really love it when different people from different groups can look at my artwork and connect to it in some way, um, even if I didn't intend for it to be in that way. Absolutely. I think that's one of the most like beautiful things about art is like the goal is to just like make people feel things or think things, but it's always open for interpretation, which is really fun. Um, speaking of which, let's see this third piece that you have for us. I haven't seen this one before, so I'm really excited to hear what what inspired this. Yeah, for sure. So this one, it's another digital artwork, obviously, because that's the medium I'm most, most comfortable with. Um, but this one's actually not finished yet. And I made the de decision to submit this anyways, because number one, I really liked like the red theme going on there. Um, but it's also like, I was trying something new, like I have never really tried to draw perspective in this way. I usually just stick to like basic front facing people. Um, but this time I tried something new. And the current title of this piece is called Sit. Um, I am thinking of perhaps naming it something different. But as of now, I have not come up with a topic for it. Although I will say that I did start this piece like a few days before Pride Month started. And I'm thinking of perhaps making it something Pride themed. But one theme I'm definitely seeing going on here is like loneliness. Like, I mean, clearly there's like these very dull, like blank staring eyes there. And I think that perhaps like, a lone person sitting in like a background of just like one color and like you know with the shadow going off of them um you know it looks very lonely so I'm hoping I can finish this one and I hope it turns out great but I'm definitely thinking of somehow making it Friday. Right I love that I love an in-progress piece I love seeing kind of like your process I also I want to point out I really love that both with this piece and the last one you were trying something new and out of your comfort zone which in itself adds to the theme of each of them like both of them are th these feelings of like feeling isolated or alone and uncomfortable and you're making yourself uncomfortable in making these pieces that are like outside of what you normally do which it's just I love the layers to that so just really really impressive work thank you so much for sharing and I can't wait to see this piece when it's done I I, I hope you you send it over because I want to see it um well, I want to talk, I want to go back to your, your first piece um, that we talked about because it's actually featured in our pride zine as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the pride zine that, that was released. Um, this is a completely collaborative zine that the youth voices came up with together. Um, Fee was a really big part in creating this piece as well as our, our youth voice, Elliot. I think Elliot did a really great job kind of organizing it, but all of the, a lot of the youth voices were really involved in creating this and it is so powerful and I, I just love it. So I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, the youth voices got together during a meeting and we said, okay, let's make a zine, a digital zine. Um, and what message do we want to share for pride? And really what kept coming up with, for a lot of the youth voices was all of the laws being passed and how they're being affected by them and how exhausted they are and fed up. And, um, honestly, really just being like, you know what, you can say whatever you want to say, but we, we are who we say we are. And you can't do anything to stop that, which I think is absolutely incredible and inspiring and gives me a lot of hope. And so that inspired this uh, theme of you can't legislate our happiness. And I just, that phrase, I think is like a mantra we need right now. Um, and so I really appreciate the youth voices putting this together. Fee, do you want to share a little bit about the process of the decisions that went into creating the scene and the flow of the zine? I think that would be really, really insightful to hear. Yeah, of course. So I think the biggest thing that went into this zine was trying to portray the idea that like, even within like the midst of like, you know, like a literal like LGBTQ plus genocide happening in our country, um, even in the midst of like, 
like conservative lawmakers actively attacking LGBTQ plus minors, banning books, banning our identities and our right to health care. We wanted to create something that could remind like the queer and trans community that we are still here. Like we have the right to be happy. And I think like it definitely goes back to the phrase of like, you can't legislate our happiness. And the idea that like, even despite like all this adversity, we will still rise up no matter what. And I think um, the main thing I really loved about this scene was just like all the work that went into it. And the fact that like all of like the youth voices, including myself, were willing to open up parts of ourselves that made us uncomfortable and share things that, you know, made us like uncomfortable, things that made us happy, things that made us proud of being LGBTQ+. And it's just that this zine is such like a mixing pot of different emotions and like trans and queer joy and different experiences and different like LGBTQ plus media that we all love. Um, and I just think that it would be really great if you guys all check it out because a lot of work has went into it. Um, you know, I myself have put like, you know, a few of my um, art pieces in it. And a lot of us are just simply sharing what we love about being um, what we love about being in this community and just the happiness it brings us. I totally agree. I it is it's really cool. I love what you said about the mix of emotions because I think that this zine particularly captures that really well. You know, we start with addressing what's going on in our country and addressing the attacks that are being made against LGBTQ plus youth specifically. And then we go into what the youth voices are doing to push against that, which has been really, really incredible and really inspiring and just brave. And then we get into this page about, you know, queer has always been here. Like, you're not getting rid of us. This isn't new and we're never going away, which is powerful. And then there's this shift to joy that trans joy is powerful. And we we have, you know, these images of our, our trans and non-binary um, youth voices and them being joyful and being surrounded by community and family and moments that made them happy. And then we get into poetry and the art and the media that y'all are, are, are consuming that really lean into the joy that you all deserve and have a right to and are hopefully basking in during pride season um which i just i absolutely love and then y'all finish it off with some resources which we always we always need more resources um so yes uh please 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 go to the it gets better uh website and check out the full zine um to really experience all the incredible work that has been put into it it is really it's it's a powerful one. Thank you so much for what you've contributed to it. It was amazing. I have some questions for you. Um, you know, we keep talking about the legislation happening. Um, so let's let's talk more about it. We've seen an increase in limitations for books, particularly, and particularly ones that feature LGBTQ plus topics from conservative lawmakers. What are your thoughts on these book bans across the U.S., and why do you think it's important to have access to these kinds of books? For sure. Um, well, I think it's pretty obvious, like, I am not in favor of banning LGBTQ plus literature and media, um, especially since, like, we pride ourselves in being a free country, yet we're actively banning, like, media and literature made by a certain group of people under like the guise of like oh yeah like a certain group of people like they don't follow our beliefs so they don't bo like they don't deserve to get their work out there and our children shouldn't have to see this it just feels a bit strange because imagine if we were doing this with race like we banned all the books made by people of color that would be a completely different discussion so i just find it extremely like sh extremely hypocritical because i know that a lot of like the lawmakers who are banning these books will turn around and say like homophobic things and be like oh freedom of speech it's a free country but then on the other hand they want to ban books so how is this a free country and I also just think it's especially like dangerous for LGBTQ plus youth because especially in a time when LGBTQ plus individuals are being attacked 
And especially since a lot of kids like don't have access to this information at home or, you know, they can't safely access it within their family. Um, schools are sometimes the only place kids can go to for this kind of information. And when you ban like resources that could be life changing um, resources that could save someone's life. Um, you know, when you ban that from public access, you're leaving certain children who are, you know, maybe, tr maybe who feel trapped at home, who are living in a hostile environment, you're limiting their access to information that could save their lives. And you're limiting them, you know, access to information that could help them learn more about who they are, how to deal with it, and you know, just how to stay safe. And I it's like, it feels like lawmakers like these, you know, like these 50 year old adults are like, singling out a group of people who, who literally have such a hard time fighting for themselves especially since like banning you know school books banning things in public libraries a lot of the people these are you know these laws are affecting are literally minors like they can't vote they can't do anything and you're legislating people who don't have a say in you know how you're treating them so i just i'm really just angry about what's happening right now yeah yeah, I resonate. I resonate with the anger. Um, thank you so much for sharing. I think that was really, it's really powerful. And I wish, I wish that these lawmakers could hear you say that because they need to. So thank you for sharing. Well, you know, in the zine, we talk a lot about trans and queer joy. Um, so leaning into that, I would love to know what LGBTQ plus icons inspire you. Oh my God, Chella Man. I cannot explain how amazing it is to see Asian American representation in the LGBTQ plus community, um, especially just coming from like an Asian household myself, like um, I'm like Vietnamese and Indian. And I can tell you that like on both sides of the family, um, the LGBTQ plus and like even just being disabled have been seen, like, I don't want to call this out as something cultural, but I also can't deny that like it's seen as taboo in a lot of these communities. I know, you know, a lot of people are becoming more progressive, but at least like at its core, like I feel like Asian Americans, a lot of them don't feel comfortable with coming forward. A lot of them just kind of like bury like their feelings and just like keep it hidden forever. Or, you know, they end up with a bad relationship with their parents. And it's just like to see like Asian American and to see positive Asian American representation in the LGBTQ plus, um, it's just so empowering, especially for someone like me, um, like Chella Man, he's such like a mixing pot of different identities. Like he's like Chinese, he's Jewish, he's deaf, he's a musician, he isn't like a model. Like it's just to see like someone who I can see myself in doing all of these things just, you know, it empowers me and inspires me. And I just really, I also just think like his art is so good. So yeah, I'm really such a fan, but. Me too. Honestly, Telemans, I've been a fan of um, his art for a really long time. Um, and I, I love that we share that, <laughs> that, that fandom. Um, but I also just love that, like, that's someone that you look up to and we, it gets better just happened to release a video with Telemans. So everyone, please go check it out. Um, we'll, we'll post it in the chat, but go check out Telemans video. Um, just an incredible, incredible human um, that is just incredibly inspiring um well speaking of inspiring fee i have to say you're pretty inspiring yourself you are doing really really incredible work um on your own and in uh your nonprofit that you've founded um and you recently accomplished something pretty awesome so i just want to take a second to shout that out and give you a moment to talk a little bit like share with everyone here um what you worked on recently for sure. So in my sophomore year of high school, I started my very own activism and social justice nonprofit organization called Redefine Z. And as per the name, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, I'm trying to redefine Generation Z into a generation of change makers, mainly because I believe that, you know, as young people, it is our right to you know, civil participation. And it is also our responsibility to make sure we are involved in the world we're going to live in when we grow up, you know, after all, like, we are going to be the future citizens, voters, and possibly even lawmakers of this nation. So why should we not start now? We recently completed our LGBTQ plus inclusive mural. It was months of long work and planning and took around six months or more to get approval from the school, but we did it. Um, 
our mural is meant to be a testament to all of the beautiful and diverse identities we have at that high school. Um, we tried our best to include as like much like, you know, racial identities as we could, LGBTQ plus identities, disabled people, and of course, those vibrant pride colors to really show that this is a queer and trans mural and nothing else. Um, but yeah, I just really want to shout out everyone who helped me work on this. It was a long and hard process to get it approved, to get it, you know, and to like just make it itself. It's the largest mural at our school. I think like 21 by 11 feet, 11 by 9 feet. It's, it's well, long story short, it's the largest mural on campus. And I could not be prouder of how it turned out. That is so, so cool. And the mural looks amazing. Incredible job. Um, huge congratulations to you and to your team. Um, again, just I'm ever inspired by you. Um, I am so grateful that we got to have this chat. And I just I love seeing your art and talking about your art. So thank you so much for being here. Um, and thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching Digital Pride's Creator Showcase. Um, this was just, it was so much fun to be here and to get to witness all of this with you. Um, again, go check out the Pride Zine on our website. Go check out Chella Man's video um, and keep checking out Fee's work um, through It Gets Better and, and everything else that Fee's up to because um, they're doing amazing work along with the other youth voices. And I hope you all have a awesome Pride. Thank you so much. Have a great one.